So I have a couple questions to ask you guys before we get into today's video. Do you guys like breaking your opponent's boards? Do you like OTKing once you break those boards? And do you like a deck that can play two card combos where essentially any two cards gets you to the OTK combo? Well, if you do, this is a deck for you. And of course, the deck that I'm talking about is Crusadia. Crusadia is a deck where you open any two names and you're pretty much able to full combo. So as long as you open any board breakers, you're gonna be able to OTK your opponent. So if you guys wanna see how it's done, how the deck looks like and what you guys can do to break any single board, stay tuned because we're getting right into today's deck profile. All right, so starting off with the main deck over here, we're of course starting off with three Maximus, three Draco, the best ones in the deck. You have to be playing three of each of these ones. Maximus, of course, is one of the better ones, but Draco, of course, is an extender for you. They're all kind of extenders in your hand once you get your link plays going. We're playing three Arborea as well, because you need the name, honestly, but Arborea is really powerful in the graveyard as a protection. Three Reclusia. Three Reclusia is a board breaker for you, so it's really powerful in that sense. Also, it has a really cool combo with one of the other cards that I'll show you guys here in a second, but three Reclusia as well as two Leonis. Now, Leonis is really powerful, but the reason we're only playing two is because it's not like the best one that you want to use. It pretty much allows for piercing damage. That's not as important in a deck like this one, right? So you just got to play this because as soon as you see two names, that's all you need to get all your combos going, right? So you're playing this big, big lineup, but seeing any two names is full combo. And then for the spells, we're playing the one uh, Revival as well as the one Power. Now, Power is really cool because Power does synergize with the Reclusia really well. So Reclusia, when it's summoned to a zone, a link monster points to you can target a crusadia card you control and a card your opponent controls pop both so if you're summoning it to a magius for example you can target the magius target the card your opponent controls you can then chain power targeting your magius and power makes it so that your crusadia monster is unaffected by card effect except its own so essentially your magius doesn't die but your opponent's monster gets popped so that's why i like playing the one power and that's it for the crusadia cards over here this is all you want to play you don't want to play any of the other ones because you really want to otk and to do that you're going to need a lot of non-engine speaking of non-engine a card that is pretty much an honorary crusadia is parallel exceed as soon as you summon any crusadia you make a link one and you can summon parallel exceed and exceed gets a lot of your plays going and a lot of your plays started so that's why i like playing three it's an honorary crusadia name and it makes it so that even if you draw a crusadia plus an exceed you still have full combo with just these two cards Moving on to some of the board breakers, we are playing three Kosh Dora Fenrir. Fenrir is one of the best cards in the deck. You can start off with this card. It's really powerful. It doesn't take up your normal summon. Going second, of course, it's really powerful because you can use it to break a lot of boards. So it's really nice in that sense. It's also technically an extender for you. If you really need to use it to link away, it's very powerful and disruption for you as well. So three Fenrir, I really like three Fenrir. And of course, you're playing Crusadia, which means you're going to be playing Kaijus. So three Gamaseal, one Kamungus, one Godarla, and one Thunder King. I like to play six Kaijus. These, in my opinion, Opinion are the best ratios playing six because uh you're more than likely going to draw one of them and it's really important if you do the draw the one but if you draw two it's even better because you can gamma seal your opponent let's say and then summon your own thunder king and it gives you an extra body on your side of the field so i like playing the six kaijus i don't think i played the deck with less than six kaijus maybe five like you could argue maybe five but i'm at 41 cards right now and i really like 41 cards in this deck so that's why i'm playing the six kaijus but with the six kaijus plus the three fenrir is really powerful to break any board plus you guys are going to see the rest of the deck is going to consist of cards that are going to do two things for you they're either going to get you deeper into your deck so you have more consistency or they're going to break your opponent's boards and that's all this deck wants to do you want to be able to break boards and otk so like I said earlier, you do want to be able to break boards. You do want to be able to OTK. And one of the best cards in this format to get you into any of your board breakers is three triple tactics thrust. The reason you're playing thrust is because in today's format specifically, this card is always going to be live. I know it's like one of those things where it's like your opponent has to activate a monster effect. Well, 99.9% .9 of the time in today's format, your opponent is either going to be activating something they have on their field. They're going to be activating a card in their hand. Think about a deck like Centurion. It's going to activate monster effects on your turn. Think about a deck like Purely. It's going to activate monster effects on your turn all of these meta decks right now are all going to activate effects on your turn which makes thrust live and thrust being live means you can search cards like your triple tactics talent talent is really powerful because of course you're going to be able to steal a lot of your opponent's monsters and that's honestly one of the main effects that you're going to be using in this deck because being able to use it as a board breaker and then being able to use your opponent's monster to link away is really really powerful but the draw two effect is very powerful as well you don't use the effect so much where you look at your opponent's hand because you're really just trying to break your opponent's board so you can otk but the draw two, the take your opponent's monster 
monster is really powerful same thing with the change of heart over here change of heart being able to take your opponent's monsters for your link plays is very very nice one harpy's feather duster of course for back row matchups also for back row matchups two of the lightning storm this is really good against rescue ways it's also really good against decks that put a lot of front row up and they don't actually play around the lightning storm and they summon stuff in attack position lightning storm can get rid of front row matchups as well right so i really like these board breakers i wouldn't switch these up at all we're also playing one slumber now you guys might be wondering why are you only playing one slumber slumber is one of the most broken cards especially with the kaijus i'm only playing one because you can search it off of the thrust and on top of that a lot of the time this card is not going to resolve it can get ashed by your opponent it can lose to any omni negate that your opponent puts up so i don't really like playing three slumber i like playing more of these board breakers more variation because if you see a combination of something like lightning storm with a change of heart against back row or you have a triple tactics talent plus a slumber like this is where it gets really really powerful right so i don't want to just focus hard on the three slumber and then lastly we're playing two desires and my tech the tech that i love in crusadia something i will never change is double or nothing this is an otk button for you that is so easy to get into with this deck so you have to be playing in my opinion double or nothing it's just so so powerful being able to break your opponent's board summon a gamma seal to your opponent like a kaiju or use any of these cards to break the board go double or nothing try to otk from there it's so powerful so i really like playing this card i also want to mention with thrust i know thrust is kind of a little bit more pricey of a card if you guys can't get your hands on thrust it's fine you guys are going to see in this main deck we're not playing imperm imperm is one of the most powerful cards because it's one a hand trap but it's also a board breaker for you so we're not playing imperm in this build however if you guys don't have access to thrust which i know can be kind of a pricey card you guys can play imperm here instead and it's still perfectly fine because it's another board breaker for you thrust is one of those cards that just makes the consistency a little bit better same thing with desires but again even without the thrust this deck is still perfectly powerful you guys can play the imperm instead moving into the extra deck it's a lot more standard you guys are going to see we're playing two equimax and when i say standard i mean that it's pretty much cards that you're always going to see in crusadia decks two regulus as well as three magius you need to be playing two and two because even if you're not otk you need to be able to make a second one kind of to push for game on your next turn so that's why we're playing two and two you can technically cut it to one and one however it's really dangerous if you guys play one on one however you have to play three magius magius is too important you need to be playing three magius one of the most important cards in your deck it gets all of your plays going and then i'm playing the one avermax as well if you don't end up otk your opponent a lot of the time you guys can end on an avermax and avermax can just be a card that your opponent can't out a lot of the time right so that's really powerful in itself then we're playing cards like appaloosa ip mascarena nightmare unicorn unicorn is really powerful however i will say i don't have access to an sp little knight i would honestly play sp little knight over unicorn so if you guys have sp little knight play sp little knight here but in my case because i don't have it i think unicorn is just a really good other option so i'm playing the one unicorn one access code talker of course as well you can link climb into access code talker super super easily in this deck so that's why i'm like playing the access code but again you can otk a lot of time without this even right but the reason you're playing cards like unicorn ip access code apo is because if you're using triple tactics talent change of heart etc etc take your opponent's monsters you might as well link climb into some of these very very powerful cards and be able to otk that way right so it's giving you different options to break boards and win games and then we're playing the one utopia as well as the one utopia double if you guys didn't notice both your magius as well as your draco are level fours so you can easily make a rank four play and if you guys can make a rank four play this is one of the best ones to go into when you are going second and trying to otk right because searching the double or nothing and then lastly we're playing one baguska baguska is of course really powerful into a lot of decks especially in a deck like this one that's a link based deck you can end a lot of your turns on like apple plus baguska or avermax plus baguska this way you're pretty much locking your opponent out of monster effects and you have a big boss monster on your side of the field and this is pretty much only if you're not otking your opponent right so that's it for the extra deck again i wouldn't change anything i really like this the only thing i would change is maybe a unicorn for an sp little knight so i always like to show you guys a side deck however i will say side deck is always going to be up to personal preference this is kind of like a skeleton that i built for you guys to use as just kind of like an idea however again if your locals is very combo heavy make sure you play cards that beat combo decks if your locals is very back row heavy make sure you play cards that beat back row decks okay but i just want to give you guys some different options so nibiru is very powerful in this deck of course being able to put this monster on your side of the field if it's pointing to equimax it can help you otk if it's not pointing to equimax the big monster for you so it's really really powerful i'm playing three herald of the abyss i know we're playing kaijus but i hate purely i think purely is one of the most annoying matchups to play against heralds are actually really good spot removal against anything but against purely i think you really need this a lot of the time if you don't open a kaiju this is really really important so three herald of the abyss we're playing 
one abyss dweller and and you guys are gonna see we're playing a card in the extra deck in the side deck if that makes sense and the reason we're doing that is because this deck actually has no graveyard hate and unfortunately decks like tier limit is still very powerful and it's still out there in the meta and this is a card that you can always end on with let's say you're ending on like an avermax plus a dweller it becomes really hard for tier limit to play around it right so dweller is very powerful then we're also playing reflesia as well as grave diggers trap hole so if your opponent forces you to go first which a lot of the time they won't but if they do force you to go first and you think your opponent is going to be like okay this guy's playing an otk deck let's make him go first and he doesn't really have any plays you can actually side these in and if you do side these in you guys can end up making your reflesia and have this as another form of disruption which is really really powerful and then we're playing three there can be only one if you guys didn't notice everything in the deck is a different type and everything being a different type means you guys can actually run this so i'll show you guys for example maximus over here is psychic draco's a dragon you have arborio which is a warrior reclusi is a spellcaster this is a beast you have a cybers and exceed we have another psychic here aqua etc etc you guys can kind of see everything is all over the place same with your extra deck he's a cybers he's a beast he's a spellcaster so you guys can see that you guys can play around there can be only one and a lot of decks actually can't so when you're citing this to go first against a lot of decks it's kind of like an auto win button Again, if you're ending on a board with like Avermax plus Baguska, sitting on one of these is absolutely insane. And lastly, for going first, 3D Barrier. Barrier is so powerful against pretty much everything in this format right now. So I really like D Barrier when you're forced to go first. Again, you really want to go second with this deck. You really want to OTK. Sometimes your opponent forces you to go first. And I just want to have some options over here for when you are forced to go first. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Crusadia for today's format. This is a deck that can essentially break through any board. It's pretty much equipped to beat anything, back row, front row, and everything in between. And then on top of that, if you open any two names or cards like Parallel, Exceed, or Fenrir, you guys are gonna be able to OTK your opponent. And even if you don't, you have cards like Avermax, Dweller, and all these other cards in the extra deck that you guys can end on, so your opponent can't break your board once you break theirs. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. Through the month of December, we are going to be uploading every single day. You heard me right, every single day through December. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.